Hi, my name is Mark Gordon, and I'm the USB 3 Marketing Manager for Microchip. Today we're introducing two new products to the portfolio, the USB 5734 and USB 5744. These parts are in production now, and I'm excited to show you the new technology that we have accompanying these parts. We call them IO Bridging, Flex Connect, among other things, and today's video will showcase those technologies. We refer to these as smart hubs because, well, smart hubs are smart. Uh, they're not smart, do your taxes smart, or be able to uh, park your car smart, but the intelligence they have on their chip allows you to simplify your design and save you money in your bill of materials. So let me define what a smart hub is. A smart hub is a hub that integrates system level functions typically associated with a separate MCU or processor. The demo you're going to see by my esteemed colleague Brigham Steele will showcase the smart functionality. So let me introduce you to Brigham and let him take it away. Brigham. Thanks, Mark. So what we have here is a demo with the USB 5734. The USB 5734 is the most configurable, most dynamic uh, chip to address all of the many different features that the, the hub has to offer. It is strappable in many different configuration modes that repurpose a lot of the digital pins in order to meet the needs of a specific application. Uh, we'll go through all, all six of the items. We'll start with mode number one. This is more of a multifunction or, or the suspend uh, feature is located in this mode. In mode number one, we have three GPIOs that can be used to interact with the USB host to be able to either indicate the status of a digital uh, device or drive a digital uh, device in a different way. It also reserves two pins for USB to I2C bridging. Uh, right now we have it connected to a microchip I2C to GPIO bridge to expand the number of digital pins being used for this setup. The two other pins are the suspend indicator to indicate where, when the hub is in a USB 2.0 low power state or whether it is in an active state in order to turn on and off different features in a system, as well as the flex connect input. Flex connect allows the hub to change which port is connected to the USB host. So in this initial configuration, the tablet here is the USB host that it, it is controlling and interacting with the hub and the devices connected to it. We see that we have a touchpad as well as mass storage devices and the phone. This tablet is in control of it all. But when we hit the flex connect command, the host role transfers from the tablet over to the phone. And now we see that the phone is interacting with the touchpad and the phone sees the mass storage devices that are connected to the device. These are all the many different options that are in configuration mode number one, the multifunction mode. In configuration mode number two, the Flex Connect feature is, is enhanced more. Many of the digital pins are repurposed to interact with a lot of the standard USB on-the-go style ID direction controller hardware items. So in here, in configuration mode two, the digital pins are used to indicate the status uh, and speed of the host that is connected, which host is connected, as well as I2C interaction, which we again have connected to the microchip I2C IO expander. Uh, one of the other features of Flex Connect is it does not have to be a digital pin that controls it. It can also be initiated from the, the host. The host has the ability to send a USB packet that can actually dynamically change which ports are visible to the new host. So here we can disable port 4, which is our touchpad, because we do not want the phone to see the touchpad, initiate our flex connect, the hub disappears from the tablet, shows up in the phone, but the phone no longer sees the touchpad, even though the mass storage devices are connected. In mode number three, the digital pins are repurposed to indicate what state each individual port is connected in. The blue LED shows a 3.0 communication negotiation speed, 
and the orange LED shows a USB 2.0 speed uh, communication. And of course, no LED shows that nothing is connected. Uh, in this, the way the pins are connected, uh, it also has two extra pins for I2C bridging. We've connected it to a fan controller here. And as the, the fan controller speeds up, it is using I2C communication not only to send the commands to turn on the fan, but to read the status of the pan, fan and uh, indicate that to the user. In mode four, that has been designated as a custom configuration. Uh, we understand that as the market changes, as features change, and, and more customers see uses for a USB hub with other items, that uh, every single case cannot be thought of. Uh, so the USB 5734 has eight kilobytes of one-time programmable memory that can be used to customize or configure the hub to meet a specific need. A uh, customer has the ability to take any new features or new specific applications, program them to the OTP to customize the part to their need, and this is the mode where the digital pins would be repurposed for whatever the customer uh, would like them to be used for. Mode 5 is the battery charging. The USB 5734 has the ability to implement the USB battery charging 1.2 specification as well as some of the more common uh, battery charging handshakes that are used uh, for popular devices today. Uh, with this, the LEDs indicate whether battery charging is enabled on a particular port or not, as well as detecting whether a battery charging, charging downstream port CDP handshake has occurred. We see the phone has initiated that charging handshake, and that's why we see the LED change. It also has extra GPIOs to uh, interact or add more features to the system. Finally, configuration mode number six is the serial or UART mode. Uh, many of the digital pins are used to uh, interact with the standard RS-232 digital line control changes or hardware uh, communication protocols. Uh, in here, the hub has a fifth device on its port that comes up as a standard USB to serial bridge. So the operating system's standard UART or serial protocols and programs can now be used rather than custom code sent to the USB device. For example, on this LED screen, we can change, select a picture, change any text, and update, and it will use the standard serial commands to send it to the display to show the new, configura the, the new configuration. So these are the many different modes and the flexible way that the USB 5734 can create more customized, more feature-rich products all while maintaining that one USB connection back to the host. Mark? Oh, thanks, Brigham. So what you've just witnessed is Smart Hub technology in action. Let's take a look at these technologies one more time. Let's talk about I.O. bridging. I.O. bridging enables host communication to other peripherals in addition to USB through the hub itself. In this point of sale terminal example, the USB 5734 enables the host to talk to peripherals via I squared C, GPIO, and UART. The benefits here are there's no drivers needed at all. We provide a set of high-level APIs to simplify the interface, and the APIs are available via Windows and Linux. Let's talk about FlexConnect. FlexConnect technology enables two ports to change roles within an existing USB tree. We offer host role swapping and host role switching with a specific downstream port. For this first example, the 5734 resides as the USB interface to an entertainment system in an automobile. When an intelligent device plugs into the downstream port, the host and device negotiate for system control. Once the device gets control of the system, it has access to all the resources originally available to the initial host. In this example, the additional downstream ports are used solely as dedicated charging ports since it's in an automobile. 
but note that these resources, the downstream ports, are available to the new host just as it was to the original host. So the benefits here are that the software stack and drivers on the device itself are very small, as most of the burden goes to back to the host to support this activity. All the port swapping circuitry is embedded in the 5734 itself, and the swapping can be done, as you saw in the demo, either by a pin, so by hardware, or by a software control. For this next example, the 5734 resides within the docking station. When the tablet's connected, it is the host of the system and has access to all the downstream peripherals attached to the hub. When it's disconnected, the Wi-Fi module becomes, in a sense, the USB host and enables the tablet to continue to have access to the downstream peripherals. When it's connected back, the original interface to the hub is reinstated. So here the benefits are that no mucks or handshaking circuitry is required between the two hosts to manage the USB tree. And interestingly, this technology comes in handy when developing USB Type-C interfaces, as a MUX is not required to manage that plug orientation of the new types of USB-C cables. We've already said that the USB 5734 and 44 make it easy to design your USB system. Here are some more proof points that support our easier-to-design claim. This new family is best in class for signal integrity for both upstream and downstream interfaces between the host and the device. Here we're looking at a JTOL performance, which is a measurement of quality for an analog receiver. As you can see, we are 15 to 20 percent better than our closest competitor in that regard. Our architecture allows customers to configure ports and GPIOs through our on-chip one-time programmable memory, OTP. Our on-chip hub feature controller will overwrite default register settings based on the data programmed into the OTP. So you can turn ports on and off, you can set battery charging capabilities and other settings using OTP. You can also get the GPIOs to enable I.O. bridging and Flex Connect simply by programming over into the, uh, into the registers through OTP. All the programmability is available via our Windows utility called ProTouch 2. But we also have another option. We have a number of pins reserved to do what we would call old-fashioned bootstrapping. So if you don't want to mess with programming the OTP, we've provided a way to set the ports and GPIOs, that's GPIOs for I.O. bridging and Flex Connect, just what you saw in the video, without touching the software utility capability at all. We are excited about the new product. There's samples available. We have eval boards. We're USBIF certified. And we're ready to go for your next design. If you want to see a product or want to see a demonstration, please contact your local salesperson for Microchip. If you don't know your local salesperson, go to the website www.microchip.com and search for global sales, and you'll be able to find someone local to your area. Thanks again, and have a great day.